In this lecture we're going to start looking at sound waves. You'll see that the form of the equation for sound waves is very similar to the form of the equations for waves on the string. The primary difference is that sound waves are longitudinal waves and also when we're considering sound waves often we'll be considering them moving out through three-dimensional space whereas when we con we're considering waves along a string they're confined to just that one dimension of the piece of string. So some properties of sound waves that you need to know. Well they're longitudinal waves which means that as the wave passes the medium moves backwards and forwards in the same direction that the wave travels. They can move in three dimensions, they're not confined to one dimension like a wave along a string. They need a medium or a material to travel through. So let's have a look at this one in a bit more detail now. So this demonstration is going to show you that sound really does need a medium to travel through. So here I've got a bell jar, which is currently filled with air. It's attached to this vacuum pump, which I'm going to turn on shortly, which will pump the air out from inside the bell jar, creating a vacuum. You can see the pressure inside the bell jar from this gauge here. Inside the bell jar, there's a bell, which I'll turn on now. And now we'll turn on the vacuum. So now a lot of the air has been removed from the bell jar and you can hear that the bell is a lot quieter. We can still hear it a little bit because there is some connection between the bell and the outsides of the bell jar and sound can travel through the material this way. But what we'll do now is we'll let the air back into the jar and you can listen to the sound that the bell makes as the air returns to the jar. So there you go, sound really does need a medium to travel through. Okay, continuing with the other properties. As sound waves travel through air, they move the molecules that make up the air and this creates high and low pressure regions. And finally, they can be modelled as a sinusoidal wave just the same as on a string, only remember that the displacement from equilibrium this time is in the same direction as the wave is travelling. Sound is always created by something making vibrations in the air and that vibrating air vibrates our eardrums and we hear the sound. So we've got some different musical instruments here and we'll see that the sound coming from them works in much the same way. So for example with this recorder when you blow through that, you'll see later in the lecture series that we set up standing waves inside. This causes the air to vibrate, which if you were in the lecture theatre, would go straight to your ear. In this case, it goes to the microphone, which then records the signal and it causes your earplugs to create that sound at the same frequency. A guitar works in much the same way. We've got strings, as the strings vibrate they're creating sound which is being resonated within the guitar body here causing those vibrations to go through the air to the microphone again. And here we've got a little drum with a little drumming monkey. And again he's making sound by hitting his drum causing the drum surface to vibrate and those sound waves are travelling through the air to the microphone. 